In this Photoshop tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use the flow type text effects for Photoshop. This is a Photoshop action that transforms your text into various different looks. There are 15 different styles included and each style has three different weights you can choose from. I'll leave a link to the flow type text effects down in the description if you want to try it out or if you just want to follow along in this tutorial. All right, let's get started. So firstly, let's create a new document, file new, and I'll set this up at 3000 by 2000 create and I'll hit control or command zero to zoom in here. So now we need to create some text. So I'll hit T for the type tool and the font I'll be using is Winsong. So I'll just click anywhere on the canvas here to create some text and it doesn't matter what color you create it. So let's just call this flow type and I'll hit control or command plus enter to accept that. Now I need to align this text to the center of the canvas. So I'll hit V for the move tool, then control or command A to select all. Then I'll use these alignment tools here, put that in the middle. I might actually scale this text up some more. So control or command T and then hold down older option. I can scale that up, hit enter. Now, next you need to ensure that your text or graphic is on a transparent background. So if you look into the layer panel here, you can see I have this background layer. I just wanna hit delete on that to remove that. So now our text is on a transparent background. We also need to ensure that your text is only on one layer. So if I have created text over multiple layers, so I've got three layers here, you, there's two things you could do. You could either shift select these three layers and hit control or command E to merge them together, or you can right click and you want to convert it to a smart object. So now when you double click on the smart object, you can go back in. If you want to run the action again, you can re-edit the text here, if you like, without destructively merging them together using control or command E like this. All right, so I'll just delete these two. And the next step is to load the brushes and action into Photoshop. So hit B and that'll access the brush tool or grab the brush tool over here. Then right click anywhere over your canvas. That'll bring up the brushes panel. Click on this icon and down to import brushes. Navigate to where you downloaded the flow type by seven styles file. And inside will be a brushes folder. Double click on the .abr file inside there. And they are the brushes required for the action to work. Next, up to the window menu and down to actions and that will bring out the actions panel. Click on this icon and down to load actions and select the .atn file. And this is the folder with all the actions inside. So if you scroll down, you can see I've set up 15 different styles for you to choose from and each style has a different weight thin medium or thick and if you need a way to quickly reference the look of these styles just navigate to where you downloaded the file and inside there is a folder called style references go inside there and i've just uh, created 15 different images of the styles so just open them up take a look and see which one you want to try out and if i scroll down here i've just put a note to not play or rename any actions below here so don't don't play any of the actions down here. They're all the workings of the action. You're just interested in choosing a style and a weight. And you also cannot rename this folder at the top here, flow type, flow type by seven styles. If you rename that, the action will break. So just keep that as is. So I'll select style two and choose the thick width. And after you've selected a style, just click the play button and you'll just get a pop-up message here, just a reminder to check your layer panel. So just make sure that your text or graphic is on just one layer. So if you remember at the start of the tutorial, if you have multiple layers, you can either shift select them all and hit control or command E to merge them together or shift select them, then right click, then convert it to a smart object. And secondly, it needs to be on a transparent background, okay? So I click continue here. And the next step is to set the texture creation start point. So what you want to do with this step is click continue and you'll notice that we have the layer style window pop up, but their text has been transformed into lines. And these lines represent where the textures will grow from. Now these lines actually uh, appear from the center of your text. So the textures actually grow out from the center point of your text. Now, if you drag this slider all the way to the left, the depth slider here, you'll see it's filled in our text again. And so the textures will actually start growing from the edges of the text. So if you're using a very thick font, it might create more of an outlined look. But if you drag the depth slide to the right, we start to move in towards the center of the text. So the textures grow out from the middle. And if I zoom in a bit here, you'll see as I drag this slide to the left, these gaps 
start to fill in. If I drag it to the right, you can see it's starting to create breaks. And you can picture these each one of these lines acting as say like a like a brush stroke. And so you can see there would be a stroke here, it would stop, there'd be another stroke there, another stroke there. So keep that in mind, okay? But definitely play around with this one. I think by default is at around 600, so there will be breaks. Okay, so all we need to do after you've adjusted this is click OK. A few seconds later, the next pop-up window will appear. And this step allows you to brush on extra details. It's completely optional. It also allows you to erase any details that you might not want from your text here. So if you have no interest in adding or erasing details from your text, you can click continue and that will proceed to the next step. But if you want to make some adjustments, you can click stop. The action will stop here. And we have this layer here selected, add or erase details here. But after you've clicked stop, there is a brush that's already selected for you. So if I just start brushing, you can start adding any extra details that you might want. Okay, so if you want to add a little flourishes, you can do that. Um, anything you want to do, you can, you can do uh, during this step. And if you want to erase some details, you just want to hit E to get the eraser tool out. And for example, let's zoom into this area here. So let's say I want to erase uh, in the middle here where these lines all intersect. So I've just hit E. Um, I recommend just having the general brushes active is a quick way to grab some, uh, some suitable brushes to use for an eraser. If you don't have these, you can just uh, click on this icon and down to append default brushes and then just click OK to that and that will add the general brushes folder in. But I've just erased a section here and then I'll hit B again to access that same brush we had a moment ago. And now I can just brush on this line here. Okay. And so if I zoom out a bit now, now this texture will actually pass through the middle here before they all intersected together. But this one will now pass through and you can zoom into areas and say we can have this one maybe go down just to the edge here, this one here. So this will look like it's sitting underneath uh, in the final result, okay? And if you're using a mouse like I am, and if you're, uh, let's just let's just fix this section up maybe. So I hit E, and I'll just erase the section here. Hit B to access the brush again. So I'm using a mouse. So if you're trying to connect lines, it's a little bit shaky. You can increase the smoothing here. Increase that, and it won't move around as much when you're brushing. And you don't need to be perfectly accurate when you're trying to connect the line. It doesn't matter if it's a bit shaky, uh, because I, I tend to smooth the lines out for you. So uh, yeah, you can spend as much time here as you want. If you've got some little rogue details like this, you might not want to turn into a, uh, a texture in the end result. You can just hit E, erase that. And so just zoom out, take a look around. Uh, maybe like we want to zoom in here, maybe I'll erase this part here and I'll hit B again. And maybe I want to just extend this one out further like that, connect these maybe. And again, this is completely optional. It's how much uh, customization you want to put into the original text. So just take a look around. And if for whatever reason you have jumped to a brush that isn't suitable for this step, just hit B, right click anywhere over the canvas and inside the flow type brushes folder, just select this first one. And that is a suitable brush for this step here. Okay, so I'm going to fly around now and just make some further adjustments to this. So I might zoom in here. And I might just, you can adjust the size of the brush using the left and right square brackets. So I've just hit E, got the eraser tool out. I'm just going to erase this part here. Hit B, grab the brush again, and I'm just going to connect this area. And I might just bring this one down a bit. So I'll get that part of the letter passing through there. Control 0 or Command 0 to zoom back out. So I might actually erase this entire area here. And I might just try to connect this to here and just maybe bring this one, bring this one, something like that. Uh, might just get, get rid of this one here. Let's connect this up to here. What else can we do? Let's, let's erase this section here. Let's connect this. Let's zoom in on this area here. And what I might do here is just erase this bit and then connect this part. 
So now that part of the letter will pass through and these two bits will uh, go underneath. Let's go down to here. I'll erase this bit. Let's get this part passing through. And connect this. Now, if you wanted to run the action again and try out a different style, you might want to keep all these changes you have just made to the lines. Because if you run the action again right now, you'll lose all these changes and you'll need to brush them all on again. So what I recommend you do is this. So all these lines here are on one layer at the top here at our raise details here. So if I move it around, they're all here on the one layer. So what I like to do is right click on this layer, then duplicate the layer and we'll duplicate across to a new document. Click OK. So here it is here. So these are all the changes that we made. So if I now, uh, let's delete all these layers. Shift select them all, delete. So we're back to the start. And I'll select style two, click play. I'll hit enter for this first step. Click continue. I'll just hit enter on this step. Now we get up to the step here of uh, adjusting the lines, brushing on extra details. So click stop. So you can see that we have lost all those changes that we have made, but they're actually sitting here in this document. So what you could do is hit Control or Command A to select all, then just hit delete. Okay, so it's gone. So we've got an empty layer here. Now if I jump across to this document, I can go select all, Control or Command A, copy, Control or Command C, then jump across back to our file here. Then we want to paste in place, uh, sorry, paste in place. So control shift V or command shift V or edit, paste special, paste in place. And that will paste it in the exact position uh, where the original text was, except we have all our changes that we made previously. Another option could be to jump to this document and save this out as a transparent image, so a PNG, then use that PNG as your original starting graphic for the action. So after you've finished making adjustments here on this step, all you need to do is click play and that will resume to the next step. And just, so just keep in mind that this step was completely optional. You could have just clicked continue and that would have gone straight onto the next step we're about to get to. So just click play and you'll get to the next step here and it's called shadow casting details and again this is an optional step so if you want to skip this step you click continue if you want to make adjustments here you click stop so what this step will allow you to do is brush over any details that you want sitting above surrounding letters or surrounding details in the final result and any details that sit on top will cast a shadow onto surrounding details giving it like a 3d look so if I just click stop here and let me just open up this example here. Whoops, I'll just zoom in a bit. So you can see in this example, uh, for this step, I actually brushed over the this part of the letter Y here. Okay, and you can see how it's casting a shadow down here. You can see on the letter T here, I brushed over this part of the T and it casts a shadow here. Down the bottom, the letter D, I brushed over this area and it's created a shadow onto the surrounding details. So this is what uh, this step allows you to do, is basically, yeah, just brush over any details that you want sitting on top. Now, after you have clicked stop, you'll notice there is a brush selected. So if I just start brushing, it is a red brush. But what you wanna do is brush over the details that you wanna have sit on top. So for example, if I zoom in here, maybe I want this part of the O to be sitting on top and cast a shadow onto surrounding details. So if I just hit B, that will access the brush suitable for the step. And I can just brush over this line. You might wanna zoom in where it gets tight here and use the left and right square brackets to adjust the size of the brush. And when you get through a tough area, you can just make the brush bigger again. And so I can just zoom out, Control Command Zero, and take a look around and just think about what, what sections you want sitting on top, casting shadows. So I might zoom in on this part, hit B, and I'll just lower the side of the brush, get through here, brush there, zoom out. So perhaps I want uh, this section here. I'll brush over this. We'll get that seen on top. What else can we have seen on top here? Uh, we could maybe have this entire section here 
So I'll do this part here and I'll stop there, I'll zoom right in so we don't intersect those other lines through there. Zoom out. So we want that area sitting on top and let's just do one more. Maybe let's go this part here. There. Actually, we'll do two more bits. We'll do this part here. So let's do that area. And let's go this part of the P. So this part here. And you can follow the same technique of duplicating this layer across to a new document if you want to save these areas that you have brushed over and apply it again if you decide to try out a different style. So for example, these areas that you have brushed are on this layer here in red called brushed, brush raised areas. So if I move this layer around, there they are. I can right click, duplicate the layer to a new document. Okay, so here it is sitting here. That was the other area that we copied and pasted. So I'm just going to delete everything here. So select all, delete. So I can jump across this document, select all, control C, and control shift V or command shift V to paste it in place. So we're pasting it onto the brush raise areas uh, lay here. So yeah, again, if you run the action and you want to try it a different style and want to um, paste these same areas, make sure it's duplicated it onto a new document first so we can grab it later on. So if you have brushed over any details in this step, all you need to do is click the play button down the bottom here to continue the action playback. And we'll get up to the final step here, which is creating the colors. So you just want to click continue on this pop-up window here. And the colors that you see here are the colors that will flow throughout the textures in your final result. And if you want to make changes to the colors here, all you need to do is click on this gradient bar here. This will bring up the gradient editor. And down the bottom right hand corner, you have this button randomize. Each time you click randomize, this will generate a completely new combination of colors. Okay. And you can change the color model here from lab to say HSB. HSB uh, tends to create more muted colors. And if I switch to RGB, they tend to be a bit more vibrant. By default, it's set to lab. And you can also experiment with the roughness here. So if I drag the roughness all the way down to zero, we have just two colors here, but as I increase the roughness, it starts to introduce a lot more colors. So I'll just click randomize a few times and we'll pick a color that we will go with. So let's go with this one here. And if you want to apply this same color preset to another document, say you want to run this action on a few different files, but you want to use the same color combination, all you need to do is click the new button here and that will apply it as a preset down the bottom here. So when you run the action again on a new document and you get to this step, all you need to do is click on the preset and it will apply it the exact same colors. So after you have done adjusting colors here, all you need to do is click OK, click OK on this window, and then that's it. From here, the action will take about one minute and it will all be done. So I will fast forward the video and get to the result. Okay, it's all finished. So after you've run the action, you might just want to collapse the style action that's left open. And if the textures or the shapes are too thick, you might want to try lowering it down to medium or thin, or you, you can of course try it a different style. And just a reminder that the style references are in the download. There will be a folder called styles, so you can open them up and take a look. But if you wanted to run the action again, we have this master folder here called, uh, well in this case, style to thick width. This will be titled whatever action you've just run. So if you just collapse that, uh, you can see the original graphic is sitting at the bottom here. So you just want to delete this folder. And if you wanted to run the action again, so you just need to delete the folder, choose a new action, and then go through the process again. Just click play and you'll go through the steps. So undo that and let's take a look at what's inside the folder here. So one of the first things you may want to do is export your design on a transparent background. So if I just uh, collapse the highlights folder here and right down the bottom here we have this layer called background color so if I hide this one and you might also want to hide your original graphic everything is now sitting on a transparent background so you can just save this out as a PNG and you are done 
So we'll just move our way up from the bottom here. And if you want to change the background color, all you need to do is double click on this box here and select a new color. Pretty simple. We have this layer here called gradient color background. If you turn this one on, it just adds a very subtle gradient colored background. And you'll notice I've got in brackets here opacity. So the opacity of this layer is at 50%. So you can turn up to 100% if you want to increase the colors. Now these are actually the colors derived from the colors that you chose during the action playback. So you can use these uh, as a background gradient if you like, or however else you might want to use it. So for these next three layers, what I might do is just turn them all off for the moment. You notice that when I turn them off, everything disappears and we'll turn on this top one here first. So this one is called main graphic above. So these are the details that I brushed over during that second step of uh, where the action paused and it allowed us to brush over any details that we wanted sitting on top. So these are the details here and they've been extracted onto a separate layer. Okay, now we have the next layer below, main graphic, shadow onto below. So if I turn this one on, you'll notice that nothing happens. And then we have the bottom one here, main graphic that sits below. So we've got above and below. And the middle one here uh, is the shadows. So if I turn the shadows on and off, you can see that there. So these details that we brushed over uh, to have sitting on top, they are now casting a shadow, which is layer here, onto the layer below, the main graphic below. Now you can adjust the shadow if you want. You can just double click on this layer. This will bring up the layer style window. And down the bottom here under outer glow, you can adjust the size if you like. Uh, you can also adjust the range, which creates different kind of results. You can also play around with the contour, things like that as well. Uh, but if you just want to keep it as is, that's fine. Just keep in mind that the opacity I've set by default is at 50%. So if I turn it up to 100%, it's definitely too strong. So uh, you can adjust the passive there, get it to a level that you like. And if there are areas of shadows that you don't want, what you could do is hit E, grab the eraser tool, select the mask here, and then just brush over any uh, shadows you want to erase. Okay, I'll undo that. And let's move up here to the dots folder. So the dots folder is pretty straightforward. I've just set up two layers here where you can just turn them on and they just add some dots. Okay, now by default they are sitting above your text. So if you want it, you can drag this folder down below and that will sit below. But I'll just turn these off for the moment and we'll move up to the highlights folder here. So inside the highlights folder, there are 15 different uh, layers here. And all you need to do with these is just turn them on. And when you turn them on, they add a different type of highlight throughout your text okay and all of these layers are still editable so for example i could i could double click on highlights 14 here this will bring up the layer style window and i could select bevel and emboss and i could just select the angle here and hold down shift and using the wheel on my mouse i can just rotate the light here if i wanted to so experiment with any of these just turn them on and off to see if they suit your uh, design. You can also do things like, uh, if I go back inside here, I can adjust the opacity of the highlight here. If it's too strong, I could lower that down or increase it if I wanted it brighter. You can also play around with the size setting as well. If you're using thicker fonts, sometimes uh, increasing the size uh, might create a better result. You can also bring the size all the way down if you just really wanted to target the, uh, the edges to create uh, more edge highlights. What you could also do is duplicate one of the highlights. So Control Command J, and then I could double click on it. And using the same style, I could just rotate it off to a different angle. Let's have a look. Maybe something like that. So we're using the same style of highlight, but coming in from two different angles. So that's the highlights folder. So lastly are some overall uh, adjustment layers here to affect the color. So let's go from the top here. So the top one is actually to change the brightness and contrast. So if I just, sorry, zoom back in. So if I just double click on this layer, you can just adjust the brightness here. If you've run the, if you've picked quite dark colors during the action playback, uh, you might want to boost the brightness a little bit. You can also adjust the contrast here if you wanted to. 
Uh, so let's keep going down here. So we have the single silhouette color and I've got a bracket with dots. So if you just want to create a silhouette of your text with the dots, you can turn this one on and you can simply just double click on these boxes here to uh, change the color. The one below is without dots. Okay. This next one down here is the single color slider with dots. So this is just a hue and saturation adjustment layer. I have enabled colorize. So if I turn off colorize, basically just resets everything. But if I turn it back on, okay, I've by default increased the saturation. So I've boosted the saturation here and I've just set the default hue to red, but you can just drag this slide along here to uh, play around with different colors. You can also adjust the lightness here, create different looks, okay? Uh, this is the same just without dots. So if I just turn this one on back on and if I increase the brightness, you can see the dots coming through. All right, and then this one here is gradient color. And what you can do with this layer is just double click on it and this will bring up the gradient map properties. Click on the gradient bar here. We have the gradient editor. Firstly, you can click randomize. If you uh, just want to experiment with different colors, click on randomize and look for a set of colors that you might want to use. Uh, you can again change the color mode if you want. You can also adjust the roughness. You can bring that down. Uh, I think by default, I set to around 40. So yeah, that's another way to experiment with colors. You can also adjust the opacity here. So I could lower the opacity. Let's say I like these colors, but I want to blend them a bit more with the original. I could lower the opacity down on this layer. So there's 0% opacity. As I increase the opacity, we start to get a blend between those colors. What I might also want to do is boost the saturation. So I could turn on this layer again, turn off colorize, and I could just use the saturation handle here and boost up the, the colors some more. So let's take a look at the before and after. So I would just hide the top folder here. So here was the original text and here is the result of style number two. So that covers everything you need to know to start experimenting with different textiles using this Photoshop action. Hope you enjoy using the effects and thanks for watching.